matter. I got a pocket full of cheese and a garden full of trees. It doesn't matter. Talk baseball, then Mr. Baseball, Bob Euchre. Welcome to St. Louis. I know you're familiar with this town. Absolutely. This is one of my favorite places to, to be, no matter if it's baseball or not. Uh, I spent two of the best years of my, uh, my, my life, not my baseball career here in St. Louis, and uh, <clears throat> I love coming back here. I'm, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, Willie McGee Day here, and a uh, big crowd going to be on hand. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's talk about uh, your career. I know you've got a, a few hits in your career. I know you've made fun of it, but uh, the uh, 64 World Series, you were a part of it. I know McCarver got some starting time there, and you kind of helped him out on the bench. Well, it was, uh, I, I guess it got to the point where we wanted to win, you know. Um, we won the pennant in 64 in the World's Championship with Timmy, and the next year, we finished six with the exact same team, uh, only I played a lot more. I played a lot more in 65, which took us from first to six. So uh, I was proud of that. You don't see many 65 Cardinals uh, tributes back then. You hear about the 64, but not the 65 Cardinals. Well, you know, we had a, I've been here for a couple of reunion, Cardinal reunions. Uh, we did a 20 and a, and a, I think we did a 10 and a 20 year reunion. I'm looking for a 40 year job. Uh, I hope we're all around yet for a 40 year reunion, but um, I, I really had a lot of fun playing here. I, I did, uh, I did a show last night with Mike Shannon and Bob Gibson. <clears throat> excuse me, following the game, and we, we we sat there and laughed for an hour about the things that happened uh, during those two seasons that I was here with the Cardinals. And uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that play baseball for a lot of years and are 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 big time and big name players who have never been to a World Series. And uh, you know, I, I feel bad for guys like that that have never had the opportunity to to, to experience that. The guy that comes to mind for me all the time is Ernie Banks. He was such a great player and a Hall of Famer and, and never experienced a World Series. There's a lot more, but um, that, that to me was one of the highlights of my career, the day that the Braves informed me uh, during the spring of 1964 that I was going to be traded to the, uh, to the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, we went on to win that year, and uh, you know everything else is, is history. But just to, just to be able to wear that ring and, and, uh, and to say that you were a part of the, uh, the championship season here, is something that a lot of players can't do. Is that the ring right there? Is that the one? Uh, this this is a light beer ring. No, we can't talk about that. We're in St. Louis. That's Miller. We don't uh, talk Miller. We're drinking 100 cases a day. <laughs> no, this is a championship ring. Yeah, that, they're, they're a lot bigger now, but uh, yeah, that's a World Series that's ring, and uh, mine's adjustable because there were you know different players coming in to wear it all the time. So, <laughs> but no, we had a good time here. We really did. I was talking to Red Shandies before the game today. Johnny Keen was the manager in '64. And then Red took over the next year, and uh, uh, it, it was it was it was great here. I mean, just even coming back here to play in this ballpark uh, after I got traded uh, was was nifty. I look at this park now; it's going to be kind of sad to see this place go. I know there's a new ballpark in the making now, but when you look around here and see the see the way they've renovated this place and the things they've done. Uh, this to me is, is baseball here, man. I, I love this place. I really do. A guy who hit like 212, 215. No yeah, offense. No, no. You're a little high there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I call you Mr. Baseball, though. How did? I mean, is that, that's pretty good that for a guy who who didn't do what uh, McGuire's done or what Babe Ruth has done, you're Mr. Baseball. I think that's kind of an accomplishment. Well, I could have done those things, but I always look down the road. You know, I mean, anybody can go out and hit 300. You try and hit 200 and hang around the big leagues for five years. That is really hard. Uh, people say, well, it's easy to strike out. That's not true. Big league pitchers, sooner or later, somebody's going to hit your bat. So to have the ability to swing and lift or lower to avoid the baseball when it comes through the hitting zone, those are things that you learn uh, during the off season. I, I never practiced during spring training <clears throat> because I don't want to tip my hand. And I mean, if I had good years, year after year after year, you know what they do? You hit 310 one year, the next year they want you to hit 320. You hit 320, they want you to hit 330. So I always tried to hang around um, maybe 190, 200, maybe uh, three or four RBIs a year, just so they're not going to put pressure on you the following year. Try to get them in September where you're, you know, you got something to deal, uh, deal with for the coming year. Um, you didn't have multi-year deals in. I remember Bing Devine sitting right behind us here. I think my best year, my biggest year salary-wise here was St. Louis. I think I made $13,000, and seven of that came from selling other players' equipment. So, you know, I mean, if you had a glove, if you wanted a glove or something, I'd take somebody's glove and I'd sell it. I didn't, I didn't have a problem with that. 
Jenny Carson, her friends, talk just about uh, all those appearances because, as we said, again, another 100 hitter. Uh, we'll say 100. Let's go with that because, sure. you know, they don't they call it the Mendoza line, but you're way under that, obviously. Um, but the appearances on Johnny Carson, you became, did you become good friends with him, and how's that uh, relationship going? Uh, I did, uh, I did shows, I don't know, I started, I think the first show I did, I did like in 19, uh, 1969 was the first one, and all the way through his final show, and, uh, I would do four or five shows a year. I think I did something like 100 shows. And, yeah, we got to be really good friends. And I, I don't see Johnny anymore. I see Doc Severinsen from time to time and Ed McMahon. But, um, you know, I never took that stuff serious. I, I wasn't serious about show business and any of that other stuff. I Baseball, everything I do revolves around baseball. But um, I had some great times on The Tonight Show. I mean, the first show I ever did with him in New York, he didn't think I played ball. He asked Ed McMahon after the game, did that? I'm not going to tell you what he said. So and so really played baseball, and uh, he didn't. He, didn't, he never thought I played. He really didn't. But, but I had a great time there all the time. Now you're gonna get to the radio booth, but I guess the biggest accomplishment was uh, Mr. Belvedere, right? Yeah, we had a, we had a lot of fun. I still see those people uh, from the series. Um, it ran for six years, which is a pretty good run for a, uh, uh, a sitcom. And uh, uh, the girl who played the daughter just had. Uh, she just had her second child. The, old, the oldest guy, the guy who played the oldest son, is a producer and director in Hollywood. Uh, the younger guy, Bryce Beckham, is, uh, I believe he's a senior now at USC. And Christopher Hewitt, who played Mr. Belvedere, uh, whatever he's doing, he's eating. I know that. I don't know what he's doing, but I know he's eating. And uh, the lady that played my wife, Eileen Graff, is still working and singing in L.A. Uh, they're all doing very good, absolutely. So as a child actor, you were a good TV dad. Let's just say that, right? You've, you've groomed those children very well. You know, it's really funny how you, uh, you live with those kids uh, for that amount of time, and you really do become a, a, like a father. I mean, they, they do come to you with problems, and, and I did what I did with my kids, slap them, tell them to get the hell away, you know? Um, uh, no, they they were that's, they were. That no, sounds like my dad. No, they were great kids. No, they were great kids. I, I love them to death, and um, uh, they, none of them are in show business anymore. I mean, I guess they had enough of it then, and except for Rob, the oldest guy who won an award uh, a couple of years ago, he does a lot of stuff with the uh, with the uh, Navy flying team, and uh, he's traveled the world with them, uh, done great documentaries, and they're all doing very very well. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very much, but before we go, i got to have a little Harry Doyle. I mean, that's, I love the Harry Doyle. You made major, let's, did you ad-lib a lot of that in the last couple ones, or was that all scripted? It seemed like it was all ad-libbed uh, from the, uh, two and three at least. No, it was it was all ad-libbed. They gave me an outline and said, be this guy, you know, and I could I could do whatever I wanted. It, it, it adds a little more work um, because you're, you're constantly doing ad-lib lines, and, and they say, do more like that, do another one like that, more stuff like that. Uh, you know, some of the stuff is scripted, but uh, when writers write things, they get a lot of money to do it. So if you ask, instead of saying, I'm not going to read this, could I try this, or can we do this, everybody's for it, and I think it works better that way. And um, yeah, some of the, I mean, we had a lot of fun making the films. I mean, the third one stunk, man. That thing was on, <laughs> third, that, the third one was uh, back to the miners, I think. That thing was on an airplane the next day after we finished it. It was terrible. But the um, first two were a lot of fun. Just a bit outside. We thank Bob Uecker very much for joining us at Sports 2.